Are you frustrated with a rigid work schedule? Do you feel like you never have enough time off to do all of the things that you want and need to do? I'm here to tell you that it can be better. I too was once frustrated and exhausted from a traditional full-time work schedule and have since figured out new ways to secure more flexibility in my schedule. In this video, I'm excited to share nine creative ways to secure a flexible schedule at work. Not all nine will apply to you, but by sharing nine different ways, I'm hopeful there will be at least one that will help you gain more freedom. So let's get into it. The first and easiest option is to use your PTO to take one day off per week for a period of time. This can give you the feeling of working part-time. Years ago, in my final semester of graduate school, when I was writing my thesis, I used my paid time off to take Fridays off. Working less allowed me to finish my thesis with a lot less stress. One of my former clients, Jody, has worked at her employer for many years and has what's called long service leave. This means she has a bucket of paid time off in addition to her regular vacation time. Many people use this to take some sort of sabbatical or longer leave of absence, she used hers to take one or two days off each week for almost a year. Once she runs out of hours to use in that way, she plans to negotiate part-time work. And she'll already have demonstrated that she can do her work in four days per week. The thing I love about this option is that it doesn't require a special accommodation or policy for it to happen. All you need to do is for your supervisor to approve your days off like any other vacation day. And if you need to maintain your income for the time being, this option does just that. The next option is to negotiate to work a full-time schedule, but to do it in a non-traditional way. Some people call this a compressed work week. People who work in the medical field often work three 12-hour shifts per week. One of my clients, Casey, who's a veterinarian, works three 12-hour shifts between Tuesday and Friday of each week and typically has either three or four-day weekends. In an office environment, I've seen people who work four 10-hour days and take Fridays off. Or sometimes people will even work 80 hours over nine days in a two-week period, which allows them to take every other Friday off. Having an extra day or more off per week can offer a lot of flexibility in your life. And it's worth exploring if this is an option at your job. Imagine if you had an extra day off every week or every other week to run errands, spend more time on hobbies, or have extended weekends. Like the first option, this keeps your income the same and is more likely to be accepted by your employer because the amount of work you do doesn't change. If extending your work days to have more days off does not sound appealing to you, but you like the idea of having more time off, you may want to consider this next option. The next option is to negotiate part-time work within your current company. This is typically done with a reduction in pay. You could choose to work four days a week and receive 80% of your base salary, or you could negotiate to work three days a week and receive 60% of your base salary. Another option is where two employees doing the same job partner to do what's called a job share. They each work 50% time doing the work of one full-time employee collectively. Angela Rosman, a co-founder of the Women's Personal Finance Movement, has worked 32 hours a week for 80% of her base salary for almost eight years now. She reduced her hours after her son was born and never went back. Now this allows her to focus her extra time on her passions, like affordable housing policy and helping women take control of their finances. One of my former clients, Liana, who was featured in a recent Work Reimagined panel about her decision not to become a supervisor, was just approved for a reduced 32 hours per week schedule. She'll work 80% of her previous schedule and be paid 80% of her salary. She's always wanted to volunteer with hospice patients, and this reduction in hours will free her up to be able to do that. 
If your employer is not willing to entertain reducing your hours, another option to secure more flexibility is to find a new part-time job. This was the option that I chose back in 2019 when I went back to work after my medical leave. This can be done in one or two ways. You can apply for a part-time job that's open or you can apply for a full-time job and then ask if they're open to having someone do the role part-time. When I was securing a part-time job, I made it to the final round of two interview processes. One was for a role that had been posted as a part-time role. For the other job, I spoke to the hiring manager about whether they'd be open to someone working four days per week. They were, though I eventually ended up accepting the role that was posted as part-time and working three days a week. Another nice benefit about starting a part-time role with a new employer is that you can set clear expectations about your work hours up front. It's not impossible to convert a role to part-time, and I know many people who have done it successfully, but it can also be easier to start fresh. Work flexibility is not always about how many hours you work. Sometimes working in a different location can also offer flexibility in and of itself. A trend that became more mainstream after COVID-19 is the idea of working remotely to extend vacation travel. If you are not able to take extended periods off, consider negotiating remote work even if it's only for a short period of time so that you can extend your vacations. This can be done in varying lengths. For example, you could travel for nine days a Saturday to the following Sunday by working remotely for three days and only taking two days off. You can maximize the time if you plan this around paid holidays as well. Or you could travel for a full month to visit family or explore a new area, and you could work for several weeks of that time and explore on evenings and weekends. This is one of my favorite ways to gain more flexibility in a traditional job because most employers are open to remote work, especially if it's just on a temporary or limited basis. One of the biggest pain points in working in an office or on-site can be a long commute, especially in larger metropolitan in areas. I lived in Boston for a decade and it has horrible traffic. When I was commuting to and from work, it could take up to an hour or more during peak rush hour. The same drive at different times of day could be as short as 30 minutes. If you aren't able to work remotely, talk to your employer about shifting your workday to avoid rush hour. It's hard to believe that starting and ending your workday an hour earlier could make that big of a difference, but it could save you 30 to 60 minutes each day, depending on how long your commute is. As someone who worked in HR for for about a decade, I can confidently say that many employers will be amenable to this request. Flexibility doesn't look the same way to everyone. On top of adjusting your schedule and the location where you work, you can also pursue taking extended periods of time off from your work. Most people assume that this is not possible, but it's very possible and can actually be a win-win for you and your employer. I actually know of a few people who take an annual leave of absence, taking six to eight weeks off each year. Most people know that teachers have historically had time off in the summers, but it's not just teachers. Last year, I did a slow fi interview with an HVAC technician who negotiated to take six to eight weeks off each year during his company's slowest period. This was a win-win for him and his employer because the company didn't need to cut anyone's hours or lay anyone off during the slow season and they retained a great employee. When we hosted a meetup in Portland, Oregon last year, we also met a couple who had negotiated an extended leave of absence for several years straight. This allowed them to travel to places they wouldn't have been able to with a more traditional schedule. The number of people that I've met with similar flexible work arrangements has taught me that this is possible more often than we might actually think. If your employer isn't amenable to a leave of absence with you as a full-time employee, you might want to explore shifting to contract work. Companies are regularly conducting work through independent contractors, and this can offer you a lot of flexibility. Not only can you plan the work to have extended time off during the year, 
but you can also typically choose your work hours within the week. Danielle, who we recently featured on the Work Reimagined panel, works with hospital software as a contractor. Because she's a contractor, she can take time off between the contracts to travel. So last summer, she took six weeks off to travel around Europe and take a canoe trip in Canada. Last but not least, you have the option of starting your own business or becoming an entrepreneur. Working for yourself can offer you the most flexibility of all of these options because you choose when and how you spend your time. That's not to say that working for yourself does not have its challenges, but if it's something you're interested in, I highly recommend it. I started my coaching business on the side while working part-time, and a couple of years later, I quit the part-time job and focused entirely on the coaching business. Now, I get to help others find the flexibility they need and want in their careers while traveling as much as I I want in my camper van. If there's one thing to take away from this video, it's that there are so many ways to gain flexibility in your work schedule. Flexibility gives you the freedom to pursue your goals and a lifestyle that might otherwise be impossible. Understanding what you want is the first step. Figuring out how to negotiate for what you want is another thing. If you want to negotiate more flexibility in your work, I'd encourage you to watch this video about how to negotiate more flexibility with your employer. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the journey.